Hello, this is Toby coming to you from the evening and uh, welcome back to the series where we make a programming language. So we're making this programming language called Smalllang. It's a very small programming language and uh, hopefully you can follow along with me uh, in building this, in getting your hands dirty and your feet wet in building your first programming language. Please feel free to make it your own. That's what makes it fun and also makes it a better learning experience. So last time we uh, took a step back and uh, did some maintenance work. We made the multi-line white space handling better. Uh, so now we can put blank lines anywhere in our source code and the parser is going to be okay. We support lambda functions and we can sort of space out our code. These pseudo if statements, which are in reality implemented as, as function calls, we can format them in this multi-line kind of way as I had envisioned it. So now that Lambda functions can be parsed, we're gonna actually write the code generator to translate our Lambda functions into JavaScript functions. Okay, so uh, we already have this AST format for Lambda functions. Uh, let's open up the generator file. The generator file is, at the moment, it's only 51 lines small. So if we try to generate JavaScript based on the AST file that was generated, let's go ahead and try it and see what happens. Uh, we, we get this error saying unhandled AST node type Lambda, which makes sense because that's a new AST node type that we introduced and we have not written the code in the generator to handle that node type which is precisely what we're here to do. So we're going to add this if statement to say basically what we're going to do if we encounter a lambda in the AST. And that's going to look like this. A lambda has a list of parameters and it has a body, which is a list of statements in this language. So what we want to do is given a lambda, which looks something like this, basically translate it into an anonymous JavaScript function. So code is probably going to look something like function and then the param list. And then we're going to have like the JavaScript body here. Call this JS body. We're kind of probably going to end up returning something like this here. And we just need to figure out what the param list is and what the JS body is. Param list should be easy because the param list is this array of parameters and we already know the only things that can be in the parameter list are tokens of the identifier type. So we can just write a map over that. So note that parameters dot map param dot value. Let me call this guy param list. I know that the result of this map is going to be an array, so I'm going to join it together with a comma. That should give us our parameters. Now we need the JS body. How do we get the JavaScript body? Uh, again, let's loop through this body. The body is an array of statements, and for each statement, we can recursively call the function that we're already in, which is generate JS for statement or expert. So I'm going to use map. Very similar to this, actually. And so this guy is going to give us an array of JavaScript. We're going to join them together with, let's say, a semicolon and a new line. And that's the JS body. That might be it. That might even work. So let me call generate one more time. No. Okay, let's debug this. So generate.js line 29 has a problem. Let's go to that line. It's saying we've got a node that is null. The node is somehow null. I'm not sure how that could have happened. I suppose what I could do is, I mean, it must have arised from here. So maybe one of these arcs is null. So I'm going to write an if statement and say, if arc is null, console.log arc is null for this index i for node and print out the node. Let's see if that works. No, we actually didn't hit this. It could be coming from a different place. Let me look for no values in this file. Oh, found it. So in the AST file, we have some no values at the bottom. So this might be a place in the grammar we have to fix, actually. 
So let's go back to the grammar. I think the problem is this index is off. I actually have only three statements in this program. Yeah, the very first statement is this fib line, but that is so complex that it's taken most of our attention here. But the next two statements ended up being null because uh, this index is off. Because this index is supposed to index into this subarray, which after some changes we made, this only has two elements. Therefore, this guy should be one, not two. Let me regenerate the parser. I need to reparse the file. And yeah, there's our call to print. And then there's our call to fit. Now, let's code generate again. And that works. Okay, great. Let's take a look at that JavaScript file that was printed out. Okay, I think there's a problem, first of all, which is we can't really use if as a function name because in JavaScript, if is actually a keyword. Uh, the second problem is the indentation. And the third problem is we actually want these functions to implicitly return the last statement. So let's fix one at a time here. Whenever we have a function call to the if function, in JavaScript, we're gonna output dollar if, like so. And then later on, we'll add a runtime function called dollar if to support the if functionality. So let's first do that. So we're gonna change the output here to whenever you have a function call and the function name is if. I'm just gonna make this a non-const. I'll say if the function name happens to be if, we're actually gonna change it to be dollar if. Now if we generate it, calls to the if function become dollar if. Okay, so that's good. A second problem is that I would like some indentation. Let me get rid of this debug here. I would like some indentation in this body of code. So I'm gonna make an indent function. I have written this many times. So a simple indentation, a one-liner would be you split the string by the new line character and then you map over it. And then in front of each line, you put some extra white space. And then after that, you join it back again with the new line. So I'm gonna use this indent function on the JS body. And then should, that should give us some indentation, I believe. Yes, that totally worked. That's looking good, actually. The last problem is I would like to have this implicit return. So for the last statement within a Lambda function, I would like to return its value. So in JavaScript land, we're gonna need to slap this return statement in front of here, here, and here. The way I'm gonna do that is within this map loop here that we're doing, we ask the index, is this the last index? Yes or no? And if it is, then we slap the return statement in front of it. Let's try that. So we'll say, I'll just call this JS code here. And then now we're gonna ask, hey, is I equals to note that body length minus one? If it is, that means it's the last statement of this bunch. We're gonna slap the word return in front of it. But if it isn't, we're just gonna return that JS code as is. See if that works. That seemed to work. And I think this probably runnable. Ah, uh, there's a problem here. Oh, dollar if is not defined. Let's define it. Let's write the dollar if function in the runtime. Dollar if is a function. It takes a conditional and a consequent block and an alternate block. Those two blocks are functions. So if conditional is true, then I'm gonna return the result of calling the consequent block else. We're gonna do the same, but for the alternate block instead. So let's try this. Generate the code, now run the code. Uh, EQ is not defined. Let's define EQ. We might actually be able to get the Fibonacci working if we just had EQ, I think that would be exciting. Okay, EQ between two things is just the triple equal operator in JavaScript. So let's try to regenerate and then run. Answer is two. Fib of three, the answer is two. That's actually correct. Fib of four, I need to run the user run.js to execute it. 
answer is three. It's like one, one, two, three, and then the next one would be five. Yeah. And then the next one would be eight. Yes, we don't need this white space here, evidently. Next one after that would be 13. Yes, we have the Fibonacci series implemented in the small language. Wonderful. Uh, I'm quite happy with this, so I'm gonna leave you on this happy note. In the next episode, what we're gonna do is implement comments, which will be the last probably major feature of the language. And after that, we probably gonna do a code challenge or two on code wars. That is something I usually do to find holes in the programming language. So uh, that's what's coming up next, and I hope to see you there.